Hello everyone and welcome to another troubleshooting advanced session. Uh, today we are going to uh, discussing about ASM brute force, uh, how to uh, perform tests and uh, troubleshoot it. In today's presentation, uh, we'll be just doing a quick overview of what are uh, brute force attacks, how to configure brute force protection, ASM, how to mitigate brute force attacks, uh, viewing brute force attacks reports, and displaying brute force uh, event logs. And we will uh, end with a quick summary. In a brute force attack, uh, the attacker attempts to gain unauthorized access to a secure area of the web application by making multiple username password guesses with the hope of eventually uh, guessing correctly. The attack involves systematically checking all possible passwords and passphrases until the correct combination is found. To prevent uh, brute force attacks, uh, the application security manager tracks the number of failed attempts to reach the uh, configure login uh, URLs. The system considered uh, it to be an attack if the fail uh, login rate increased at a, a very high rate or if the fail logins reach a certain number. So how to configure brute force uh, protection? Uh, you can add uh, the default brute force protection when creating a security policy. If you do, uh, the policy simply needs to know for which login page to enforce uh, brute force protection. The system creates a default brute force configuration that applies to all defined login URLs that are not associated with uh, any other brute force configuration. Uh, you can have the system detect and create login pages automatically, or you can create them manually. Uh, the key bit and, and the important part is that at least one login URL uh, must be defined in the security policy to protect uh, against brute force attacks. Uh, then you can uh, either use the default brute force configuration or create a new configuration. Uh, brute force security includes both uh, uh, session-based uh, and, and dynamic brute force protection. So session-based uh, mitigation uh, will count the number of failed login attempts that occurred during one session based on a session cookie. When the number of login attempts during a session exceeds the number specified, uh, the system triggered the brute force uh, uh, violation with um, maximum login attempts are uh, exceeded and applies the blocking policy, uh, what the mitigations you have configured. If the violation is set to block and too many login attempts are made, the client is blocked for a number of, of seconds. And for the dynamic mitigation, um, it, it detects and mitigates brute force attacks based on statistical analysis of the traffic. Uh, so uh, the system mitigates attacks when the volume of unsuccess unsuccessful login attempts is significantly greater than the typical number of uh, failed logins. Uh, you activate this method by setting the operation mode to either alarm or alarm and block. So let's do a quick review on our lab environment. Okay, now just a quick overview of what we have configured here for our tests. It's a simple virtual server uh, listening on port 80, HTTP virtual server, with a, a fundamental uh, security, ASM security policy applied to it. And we're logging all the requests. In uh, so our backend, um, We have a simple application uh, to authenticate e users. Here, and uh, 
uh, listening um, on port 80, and this is the URL, the login to, to .php. So if we do a quick test here, uh, the expected username and password is test. And password one, two, three, four. And we hit login, we get redirected, uh, we're authenticated and redirected to a page. And if we try to use a uh, wrong password, we will get a uh, wrong username and password. So if we go back here uh, on and review the uh, ASM policy configuration, we go to security, application security, anomaly detection, brute force attack prevention. So by default, um, uh, the ASM policy uh, comes with a, a, a configured a brute force uh, protection, uh, which uh, it will be applied to all the defined login URLs that do not, uh, do not have a brute force configuration of, the, of their own. Uh, to enable this uh, default brute force protection, you will need to enter here and click on brute force protection on enable. In our uh, test environment, we will uh, create uh, our custom um, brute force protection. So how to mitigate uh, brute force attacks? The system it, it detects brute force attacks uh, based on failed fail login rates. Uh, therefore, the security policy needs to have login pages uh, for the web application you want to protect. Uh, these uh, login pages, uh, what, what a login page specifies, a login URL that uh, it presents a site that the user must pass through to gain access to the web application, as, as we just saw in, in our lab environment. The ASM can create login pages automatically uh, for you based uh, by observing the traffic, or you can create them yourself. The uh, so if, if it is going to create uh, login pages uh, on automatic mode, uh, the, the security policy looks for the login pages by examining the traffic to the web application. So when a login page is found, the policy builder suggests adding the login form to the security policy uh, be, uh, because the suggestion is learned from res uh, responses and responses are considered trusted. If the learning mode is in automatic, the login page is uh, typically added to the policy right away. If the learning mode is uh, set to manual, the login page is added to the learning suggestions on the traffic learning uh, screens. Uh, where you can add it uh, to the policy manually later. And if policy is set to manual, uh, before you can create a login page manually, uh, the most important consideration is that you need to be familiar with the login URL or URLs uh, in the application uh, that the security policy is protecting. This is really important and we will uh, review this on, on, on our lab. So let's perform our, our first test. So a quick overview here, we have our login page. The first test is in login2.php. And this is, um, uh, one, once we have identified our login page, we can uh, configure that on our ASM and then enable the brute force protection. So 
So let's review uh, in application security session on login, login page list. We have here already created our login URL and login2.php, which this configuration uh, is an HTML form with username and password um, as the parameters and expected response is a 302. And let's review the brute force attack prevention. So for this one, uh, login to .php, uh, we have uh, only um, checking for uh, failed login attempts for a particular u uh, username. And the action that it will be triggered is uh, alarm and send a captcha to, to the user. So we will test now, um, sending some uh, failed uh, login attempts to our site. So whatever user and whatever password. Attempt number one, two, attempt number three. Now on attempt number four, we will expect to uh, get the alarm or, or a capture uh, how it's, it's configured. Number four, nothing happened. Let's keep trying. Attempt number five. Attempt number six. Attempt number seven. So as, as we can see, um, the uh, prevention is not being triggered, so something must be wrong. Uh, so then let's go back to our GUI in conf and review our event logs and the configuration. So we have no illegal requests reported. And let's read from the start. So logging to .php. And what we can notice here, uh, this is an example uh, how important it is to uh, identify, or correctly identify which one is, is the uh, login page. So, um, we thought that the, uh, when we enter to the login to .php site, which we can uh, uh, provide the username and password to enter, but this is just the landing page for the for the login. Actually, uh, and you can review the, uh, that this is just a GET request. When uh, you're sending um, the username and password parameters, you're actually sending a post, and this will be uh, your login page when the um, HTTP method is posed. And you can see here that uh, we are sending here the username and password. We can review here the latest one. So we already identified that we had a problem in our configuration. And basically what we need to configure is uh, login.php as our login uh, URL. So we're going to review login page list. And we have here the login.php. HTML form with its parameters, the username and password, and expecting a 302. So let's review the brute force attack prevention. And let's create one from scratch so uh, we can take a look.
Okay, so we click on create. We will need one for our login PHP. That, uh, we now successfully identify that this is the correct uh, login page because the post is sent to this URL. And we will just use the username to track the failed login attempts. Click on create. And now we apply. Let's test again. We are to our client. This is the correct login URL. And we will start sending some fail attempts. One, attempt number two, attempt number three. We should expect to get a capture now. Number four, nothing happened. Number five, nothing happened. So again, something must be wrong. Let's review our config and the event logs. Get here, we can see the login is sending a post with a username and password. So it should be triggering. And at this point, um, we will need to review. Um, this is the part that you need to understand the application. What, what is uh, actually um, expected as a response from the application? So here we can see the request. Let's go and take a look of our config for the session logins. Login PHP. And let's confirm uh, if the parameters uh, are correct. We have username with double E and password. So what you can do uh, is, uh, or use developer tools uh, to review the response from the site, or what you can do is um, take a packet capture. So let's use our developer tools, and we will send a request here. Let's send a successful login attempt. or a third one. Login. Okay, so we can review now our request. and confirm first uh, let's see the response headers okay so the we confirm here on the request that the application type is url and code so uh, our authentication type will be a HTML form. And if we review in our event logs, the actual name of the para, para authentication parameters, username and password,
so we can confirm a few things here. Uh, the type of authentication and the uh, username and password parameters for the HTML form. So for the username is username without double E and password. So that is what the problem is in our configuration. So we go back to login pages and uh, we make sure to configure this correctly. So it should be username. We click on save. And apply policy. Okay, so we can now uh, test again. Our client, let's send, it's a different username. Attempt one, attempt two, attempt three, attempt four. And we get, uh, we got our capture as expected. So right now that we have um, the thing that we did, we confirm which is the actual login page and we review uh, via event logs or developer tools, the actual request and the parameters that are, are being sent to the, to the login page. Here we can just complete challenge. That's okay. And we will review now our, our, our event logs. And we got here uh, our violation with the brute force maximum login attempts to this particular site. So the, as a quick summary, the requests um, or, the, or the parameters that are being sent in the post, you can review on the event logs and as, as the request, if you're logging the requests. And it depends on what you have configured to make sure if you are uh, actually uh, succeeding in your attempt to log in or not. Uh, let's take a quick look here. in, in uh, the access validation part. Here, uh, we're expecting an HTTP response status uh, 302. So when the client is uh, successfully uh, enters, uh, uh, logged in with the correct username and password, we can confirm that on our clients, open developer tools, and now we will, we will use the correct And we can see here that the response is a 302. So that is the expected response when the client tries to uh, uh, connect and provides uh, expected username and password. So this is uh, another part um, to be careful on the configuration. Actually know which is the expected response. Uh, 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 for example, uh, 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 and a string that should not appear in the response or the expected uh, response status. It's a key bit also to understand and you can use developer tools or packet captures to get this type of information if you don't have uh, the insight of how the application works. Another test that it is interesting um, to show you is that a uh, there are different behaviors on uh, depending on the version. At, in, in this lab environment, we can see here, let's just confirm. It, 
uh, we are running software version 13.1.1.4. So let, let's compare how this behaves uh, compared uh, with this uh, other lab unit that is actually pointing to the same backend server, which is running 13.1.0. Uh, So let's make another test to so this virtual. Let's close the developer tools. Let's go to login.php. And we will try with a different user just to trigger. So uh, we have configured to trigger an alarm and captcha after three failed, uh, failed login attempts. This is number one. This is number two. Attempt number three. Attempt number four. So a straightforward on attempt number four, we got um, the expected uh, mitigation. So let's do that on the other uh, unit running 13.1.0. Let's review what we have here in the config. It's again a plain virtual server on HTTP listening on port 80 with a fundamental security policy applied to it. Quick check on the session, session logins and login page to check if it is configured. It's not, and we will create our login page now that we know which one is login.php HTML form and is the username parameter name is username and the password parameter name is password. And we expect a 302 if it is a success a successful login. Click on create, and now we are going to enable the brute force uh, prevention, attack prevention. Create. We will see here in the drop down menu the login page that we already configured. And we will, uh, for this test, we will just use username. The same uh, three. Uh, fail login attempt, it should trigger an, uh, uh, an alarm and a captcha. Click on create and apply. Okay, so this new virtual server that is being handled by the other big IP running version 13.1.0 is .91. We go here and we start with our test. Attempt number one. Attempt number two. Attempt number three. Attempt number four, attempt number five. You already noticed that we, now we did five attempts and what we got here is a blocking page with a support ID. Straightforward when we were expecting to receive um, a capture challenge. So the difference be between uh, versions is that in 13.1.0, uh, before uh, the clan can be challenged, uh, the URL needs to be qualified. And this will happen after uh, uh, 10 requests, uh, 10 requests or more. And on uh, version 13.1.4, uh, um, 
the URL, uh, since you already configure a URL, it is expected to be qualified because you are configuring a, a, URL, uh, a login URL. So that's why it goes straightforward. So uh, I will show you now the difference. So we already have uh, uh, five um, attempts uh, to this site. We will send um, a few more just to make this URL qualified, and we will uh, check the difference on the behavior. So this, this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, just in case, and test again with, I don't know if I use the same user. We'll see. Uh, attempt number one, and we got it here. Now we're getting the capture as as suspected. So, in uh, this version, in order to the capture to be uh, the client to be uh, challenged by a capture, the URL must be qualified. And this happens after uh, ten a uh, ten request to the particular URL. So this is a thing to bear in mind when you are uh, actually um, testing the brute force attack. Okay, so we will continue now with our presentation. And how to view uh, brute force attack uh, reports. Well, b before you can look at the brute force attack statistics, uh, you need to configure or source space or dynamic brute force protection. Uh, this is uh, obvious. If you don't have the brute force protection, you will not see any, any type of statistics regarding brute force attacks. Uh, you can display charts that show information about brute force attacks. Um, a single brute force attack can have hundreds of events. Uh, and, and, and these charts will provide visibility into what applications are being attacked, uh, the login URL, and the start and end times of such attack. Uh, the session-based brute force protection, on the other hand, is based on tight to the uh, session tracking, the, the number of, of failed attempts from a particular client. Uh, um, this is like the test that we, are, we, are, uh, we were performing here in, in our labs. And that this session is tracked by the ASM, uh, the, the presence of the, the TS cookie. Uh, the brute force attack reporting screen uh, is located in the main tab, security reporting application brute force attacks. And what you see uh, in the event logs, application brute force attacks are uh, correspond to the volumetric brute force attack, not usually tied to, to a session. So this will be based on the and the settings that you have configured on the dynamic brute force protection. So if we take a look now uh, on our lab, if we go to report, reporting application charts, Let's use the other one. Security reporting application charts. And we have here uh, information. Uh, let's, and then you can change the filter to uh, top attacks or Let's use in last day. Okay, what we need to do here is to send um, or to emulate uh, a lot of requests uh, because we just did one or two and we enter into the capture straight, straightforward. So uh, what we can do, 
use this as our client and we can use a command. A for command that it will basically uh, send uh, 500 uh, at, uh, failed uh, login attempts to our login.php uh, login page. And just to clarify, this um, uh, this command here is, is not to emulate a dynamic loop brute force attack it, it, because it will be coming from the same source uh, all the time. So basically it's, it's just uh, several uh, requests or attempts. Okay, let's quit that finish and we can then review the chart. Okay. We go back to reporting application charts. And we can see here our brute force attack going on. And then with the get uh, the chart get updated, we will see more information. So since this is uh, not dynamic, this is a session based. You can review this on on reporting application charts and then filter by attacks. Or the other way is. Uh, by event logs application request. And we, we will see them here. We, we uh, for this particular test that we just performed here, we are not going to see blocks because actually the client is getting like a capture and uh, the, uh, it is then reset because uh, the uh, curl cannot send the uh, capture challenge. It's not a proper um, JavaScript client. So that's why we're gonna see blocks there. And to finish with our presentation, just uh, to display in brute force event logs. Uh, you can display the event logs to see whether brute force attacks have occurred and view information about the attacks. Uh, this is um, on the main tab, um, security event logs application, brute force attack. Uh, this again, uh, please note that this will just work for when, when there is volumetric uh, brute force attacks. And uh, if the log is long, you can uh, use the attack start, uh, start time uh, or number of login attempts and newest column, uh, uh, the heading to filter the list and show more specific entries. If you want uh, or for more targeted filtering, you can open the filter dialog box. So basically that is even logs application brute force attack. We will see nothing here because we didn't emulate any uh, dynamic uh, volumetric brute force attack. And also reporting brute force attack is just for a uh, volumetric dynamic brute force attack.
uh, the resources that cover um, most of the information that we discussed here, uh, you can find them in mitigating brute force attacks and uh, config, uh, configuring brute force attacks protection uh, for version 12.1.2 and 13 and above. So to summarize what we discussed, uh, the ASM system can mitigate brute force attack by tracking the number of failed login attempts for a URL that is defined in the security policy and taking an action when the attack is detected. A key important bit, uh, that at least one login URL must be defined in the security policy to protect against brute force attack. So you can define and mitigate, um, enable the brute force protection by session-based mitigation and dynamic uh, mitigation. The session-based uh, corresponds to um, um, a username or IP address uh, based uh, and dynamic volumetric, it, cor it corresponds to the statistical uh, type of attack. <clears throat> uh, to create a login page manually, also important, you need to be familiar with the login uh, URL and URLs the uh, and, and the application the security pol policy is protecting. Uh, as we saw, you need to identify um, uh, the actual uh, login URL. This, um, you can review this on the event logs and confirm where is, is the post being sent with the uh, username and password parameters and also review what is the expected response so you can configure uh, these um, access validations on the login, on the login page. And uh, to review the ses uh, session-based brute force protection, uh, you can go to security event logs, application event logs, and uh, in event logs, uh, you will see the what is triggered or you can filter by the even log brute force maximum login attempts are exceeded. Uh, or the second option is to go to security reporting application charts. Again, this is when this is session based brute force attacks. And when there is dynamic brute force protection, the volumetric attack, uh, you can review uh, those on security even logs application brute force attack or and security uh, reporting application brute force attacks. So with this, we conclude our presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us.